are lovers of winter and snow. All right, I didn't think there would be many of you considering we are in Searcy, Arkansas. That is why today I am going to be informing you on the history of the unique sport of cross country skiing. Cross country skiing is a great sport to take advantage of during the winter time as it gets you outdoors and moving when most people are indoors and inactive. I myself spent four years on a cross country ski team skiing all winter long and loved every minute of it. So today we are gonna look at the three main aspects of cross country skiing. The earliest known origins of cross country skiing, the adaptation to recreational and competitive skiing, and finally, the developments made to result in the modern sport we have today. To begin, we must go back hundreds to even thousands of years ago to the earliest known origins of cross-country skiing. According to SkiXC.com, the earliest Norwegians used cross-country skiing as a form of transportation. They, this, using the skis allowed them to glide across the snow instead of having to lug their feet through feet upon feet of snow in the mountainous and snowy terrain of Norway. According to Olympic.org, um, early Norwegians used the skis to um, hunt and gather firewood and even keep in contact with neighboring communities and other villages. The, according to OutthereOutdoors.com, the 1800s was a time of significant improvements to skis themselves. In 1850, the evolution from a ski of just a, basically a wooden plank of wood, a wooden plank evolved to a ski with an arc in the middle where the foot would be. And this made for equal weight distribution and made the skis more aerodynamic. At the same time, skis were created that had two bindings instead of one, one with a strap over the toes and then one with a strap that went around the heel. This allowed for the heel to rise when skiing transforming the cross-country ski motion to a shuffling and restrictive motion into a kick and glide motion that was more effective and comfortable on the body. After hundreds of years, cross-country skiing eventually became a sport for recreational and competitive use. This adaptation originates from one of the most famous ski, ski, ski legends that dates back to about 1206 AD. A bit of context is that there was an intense war between the Berkebeiner and Bagler clans. The, prince, the king, Hakon III, was unfortunately murdered by the Bagler clans, leaving his son, just a baby, and heir to the throne, vulnerable to the Bagler clans who also planned to murder him. This left it up to two palace guards who were loyal to their king and skied 55 kilometers to safety. Today's Berkebeiner and Lopit races um, symbolize the survival of the young prince by commemorating his survival and they average to about 50 kilometers each. The first race dates back to about 1842 but was not inducted as an official Olympic sport until 1924 for men and eventually in 1952 for women. After another generation passed, the skate style of cross-country skiing grew in popularity and in official status. Up until 1980, only the classic style, which we um, previously mentioned, um, existed. This um, included a form of skiing where parallel tracks were set in the snow and it was a forward motion of cross-country skiing. In the early 18, 1980s, the skate style grew in popularity and this resembles more of an ice skating technique where the skier distributes um, weight from one ski to the other in a more of a V-shape. According to SpokenNordic.org, by 1985, there officially became two different races at, seen at cross-country races, one being called freestyle race that allowed the, sk the skate technique and the other classical race which did not allow the skate technique. So let's recap. Today we covered just a brief history of the complex sport of cross-country skiing, including the earliest form of it being transportation for survival of the earliest Scandinavian countries, eventually transforming into a recreational and competitive sport, and finally the new additions made to result in the modern sport we have today. So I hope you enjoyed some I hope you learned something new about cross-country skiing, and if you ever find yourself with the opportunity to strap on a pair of skis, 
I encourage you to take it because who knows, you might find yourself fall in love with the lifelong sport of cross-country skiing just like I did.